Hi everyone, welcome to Gamer's Ledge. Uh, I am, of course, Mark, slash Balth, and joining me for our video review of Destiny is Matt, slash Neo. Howdy. And uh, we're going to do this a little differently. I'm going to have, we're going to have footage of Destiny kind of interspersed as we're talking, but I wanted to actually make this a conversation because Destiny is doing two to five minutes for a video review is not good enough. Um, to give you an idea where I'm at, I'm t level 28 and a half in the game. I've sunk more than four full days of time into the game. Everything I have is a legendary or exotic. I've run the raids, I've run the PvP, and if you're not familiar with that term, that's player versus player, as well as all of the story content a thousand times. Uh, Matt, where are you at in the game so that people know where your frame of reference is coming from? Uh, I just hit level 21, about a fifth of the way through level 21. Uh, I've completed the story missions. Uh, I have done P, uh, the, also done the Crucible, which is the player versus player PvP stuff. Uh, I have <clears throat> done some of the dailies, which are set up over on the on the left hand side of your screen. Uh, I've not done all of them. I, I have like I haven't done a daily. Uh, done a daily mission and i think i've done a daily strike but i haven't done whatever the other two are i don't remember um but yeah i've uh i've done played by myself just running through the world i've played with a full fire team um and uh yeah that's pretty much where I, oh and all my gear everything is blue which is rare except for my heavy weapon and my class uh gear which doesn't do anything anyway so right so I, I wanted to give that frame of reference to explain that we both put a decent amount of time into the game. Um, by the way, this is going to be a uh, podcast with adults using adult language. <laughs> I'm giving you that yes. warning now so that if, you are, uh, if your ears are sensitive, you may wish to skip right to the end where you can see the, the graphical score up on the screen. Uh, but I'm going to start by saying... Fuck Destiny and fuck <laughs> Bungie. Um, I, I wanted to love this game. And I, I kept a... I actually was a very big proponent of this game uh, going into it. I, I, As you know, I said, oh, let's all get on. Let's play Destiny. And I actually uh, took some vacation and that corresponded about a week after De Destiny's launch or the week after Destiny's launch and I logged a lot of time into it and what I can tell you is that the scope of the game is not what they promised us they promised us all these things at E3 for two years saying hey if you see that you can go there in fact I'm going to splice in the footage right here so all of this is playable space it's magic and you know, that was their people. That was Bungie's people saying, if you see it, you can go to it. Well, that is bullshit. Utter 100% bullshit. But I, I'm getting sidetracked. Let, let's start in the standard <laughs> review format that we always follow. So first off, we always talk about story. Now, Matt, <laughs> you, you have beaten the game, correct? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of about it. Yeah, there is no story. What, what we get, uh, we're going to keep this review spoiler free, but the very first scene says that you've been dead for hundreds of years. And then they just start throwing out all these names and places, and they don't explain a single fucking thing in the entire goddamn game. It's just like, oh, go here and kill the fallen. Well, who are the fallen? Why should I be killing them? What's their purpose? Oh, they're with the dark. They're bad. And I'm sorry. You can tell by how they look. Yeah, you can tell by how the Yeah. And I'm sorry. Peter Dinklage's robot, which uh, which everyone I know now is calling Dinky in the game. Uh, Dinky in the brain. Um, is the most useless companion ever because... He, no, no, no. He sets off all the alarms to allow you to have to shoot alarms, all the enemies. He never gets anything done before waves of enemies... You know, I, I'm getting into the great. Yeah, I'm getting into the great place, so. Fallen are getting smarter. Like the entire system is wired to it. I'll work faster. <laughs> so the story, the characters are bland. 
I don't care about any of them. It's lifeless. And what's worse is the only world building you get is in the form of grimoire cards. And the only way that you can see those grimoire cards is to log on to Bungie's website or use the companion app on your phone. So in the game that you actually paid for, to give two shits about what's going on, you actually have to leave the game you paid for. Yeah, um, there, there's definitely some issues there. Uh, part of me wonders, okay, full disclosure, I have never played more than like 20 minutes of a Halo game and it was all player versus player stuff. So I have no idea how a Halo game was story-wise. No, they actually were pretty decent. I mean, they had a, a story. That's that's what makes me mad. Is I'm not saying that well, Halo 2 ending. Okay. They, they weren't always good stories, but there was a story and a progression for the characters. Okay, and that's that's there is here, but it's very, very, very minimal. It reminds me more of a bro shooter where there's a story, but it's really just to get you from place A to place B to shoot stuff. Um, yeah, the grimoire cards are interesting. I mean, I've I've enjoyed reading some, but after about ten of them, I tend to just click, 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 just to clear them off a of flashing on the on the screen. Uh, again, that's on my computer because you can't get to them from the game. Uh, they do expand a bit on the universe, well, they um, do. and that, that's and, what makes me mad is because that's stuff that should have been told to you in the game so that you right. gave a care about anything that was going on. But yeah, go ahead. Right. I, I didn't right. interrupt. No, no, that's okay. Um, but the the whole story mission thing, yeah, they throw you into this. And it's really weird for me, especially trying to keep it spoiler free. There is a scene where based on your race, it makes a lot less sense if you're of a certain race, <laughs> which I am of that race. So it made absolutely no sense whatsoever. Well, well, okay, so not, not, we'll keep it spoiler free, but my character is of a race that apparently isn't even on Earth. So how did I get there hundreds of years ago to be Which... revived? And, and, and this is my big thing, is Bungie is usually very good about their world building, okay? But I'm sitting there on Earth, and the way the story is set up is that mankind found the Traveler on Mars, and then there was hundreds of years of peace hundreds as in more than 300 because we know that in the lifetime in, they, they say this in the opening movie the lifespan of the average human triple triple and so we had to have at least gotten through 300 years to bear that out but there are still combustion engine cars <laughs> on earth that your corpse is found <laughs> there are corpses found in them including yours and i'm like what happened to the golden age? You know, where are the future cars? The, or the rockets? There, there is no better car than the combustion engine. Car. Because not only does it show up there, but it shows up on other colony locales that we find later in the game, and they're still there. And I'm like, but we had to use advanced spaceships to get to these planets. Why are we still using combustion engine cars? Well, and and I mean, they imply that we. I don't know if it was outlet said, but I mean, it goes beyond our solar system. Yeah. Based on yeah, what no, they've told us. So. And, and what's worse is they're all metal frames, <laughs> rusted cars. They're not even like polymers or plastics like we have today. You know, they're not, they're not fiberglass. They're metal. <laughs> it, it just blows. It was a face. retro colony. It was a retro no, colony. No, that's Earth. <laughs> I mean. It, it just I, I, blows my mind that, that so much the yeah. world building aspect has just been like nobody thought about this at all. I don't I don't know. I I have a feeling and this is where I'm going to say I think the 10 year plan was a crutch. Oh, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I they they use the 10 year plan as a crutch to throw something and get it out there. There are so many things in the game Oh wait a minute, we're not to that part yet. Um, yeah, yeah, we're not. To including that. including the story, it, it's just not complete. The story's no, not complete. It's not, it's even not close to complete. It's, it's, it's not even close to complete. It's not even. And they the basically scale of a story. Yeah, I mean, there's it's no, there's no middle and end. There is only a beginning. I, I yeah, I, I think I think most third graders when they have to do an outline for a story in in class in you know writing class whatever they call it these days, uh has more story to it than what we got. Um, but then again, at the end of the day, to you and I, that matters. 
you know we're you know we're of that type of gamer who enjoys the world who enjoys the story who wants to know more who wants to see that epic span and we don't want to wait for 10 years to get it right and and i think i think that's a, a natural segue into the gameplay um because if bungie did get anything right it's the gameplay of the game sort of and let me qualify <laughs> that so it this is a first person shooter it is a i don't care what the fuck bungie says it's an mmo pretty much um and all this double speak that they say that oh, the game doesn't start to level 20 no it means that they impose an artificial level cap being 20 that's very easy to get to and then you have to grind for gear and go out on all these missions uh, it's over and over the same things that you've already done in the game so let's first focus on the shooting aspect the the mechanics of the game even i can do it yeah they're great <laughs> I, I think i think that part is a total win um you've got really tight shooting controls guns that do feel different in how you use mm -hmm. them uh but for me the standout is the melee attacks Melee attacks feel visceral. There's a weight to them. You get that satisfying impact that you somehow feel through your controller when you use it. Uh, and it's really... that I, I think that's probably uh, the core of what the game is, is the melee and shooting mechanics. And that's done very well. Yeah, and, and it's, I think that's great. most greatly pointed out uh, in the PvP. Um, you know that I mean the PVE. It's uh, I've always heard that's player versus environment. I'm not sure if that's really what it stands for, but um, the uh, you know the enemy AI in the beginning up to level 20 for the most part is pretty passe. I guess I would say now that I've passed 20, I see it getting smarter. Um, so and I've heard you and 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 Tude Monkey and a couple other guys talk about how they get it's as annoyingly good, annoyingly good as you progress. Yeah. Um, so I, I haven't experienced that yet, but I mean, it, it, it's good. You can see it there. Um, but especially for that visceral feel, when you get into to, uh, PvP and, you know, you and I are running together and we tend to camp spots, you know, we tend to sp camp the flag and control, right? Right, bitches. I'm a camper. <laughs> He is more so than me even he's uh, but like you know so he'll be sitting in a corner i'll be sitting in a corner and i'll have my shotgun out and i'll have that's the only time i've ever actually played a game where i've had a finger on each trigger usually i just use my pointer fingers and switch back and forth i've actually got my fingers on two triggers here because i can shotgun melee shotgun melee i can alternate them back and forth quicker than i can do any either one individually um and they're they're just yeah i mean close range 100-ish power shotgun, you can take out somebody with a, with a shotgun blast followed up by a quick melee. And I'm using the, the Warlock, but it's it's true for... The, I mean, the other two classes, I think, have stronger so, melees so than the Warlock. Actually, so let's talk about that for a minute. There are three classes in the game. Titan, which is supposed to be kind of a tank damage absorber. Um, Warlock, which is kind of a, a, a range... Fire They're Jedi's. Shooter. Yeah. They're Jedi's with guns. And then Hunter, which is supposed to be basically all around knife throwing, uh, shoot 'em up badass. And you know what? They're all the same. It Pretty really much. doesn't matter. You know, well, I mean the Titans can take more damage. I mean they do don't go down slower. Yeah, you you um, you have two subclasses. Each class has a subclass. You start with one of the subclasses and then at level fifteen you can unlock the second one. So for example, the Titan has a big ground pound as its starting class, and then you get the defender subclass later on, which lets you throw up a, a shield and that no the thing is awesome. nothing can shoot in or out of the shield. So they can walk into it though. <laughs> uh, talk, talk about your class and subclass. Uh, my class and subclass, uh, the Warlock has, oh, I forget their names, it's like Night Walker and yeah, Sun Void Walker, Slinger. Think, yeah. Void Walker and, and Sun, Sun Singer. Singer. Yeah, um, so the, you start out with Void Walker, uh, which, you know, is uh, your your it, melee. It was a giant, a giant energy ball. That yeah, uh, that's why it's the huge AOE. That's why I say they're basically Jedi with force push because that's your melee is you kind of do a palm out thing and it does a force push kind of damage thing. And then your super is this, it's called a Nova Bomb. It's basically a giant ball of dark energy that pulses out and blows up and destroys things. And, and um, Slinger, uh, 
uh, Sunslinger is uh, the same, basically the same melee, uh, but your super instead is a stat boost. It, it it has the same animation as the golden gun for the hunter, but well, it's supposed to you get wings also. Yeah, you so, get yeah. wings, but you're supposed to elevate all your stats. Honestly, in PVE, I haven't found it terribly useful yet. Um, it's useful for for its secondary ability, which Sunbro. Uh, Warlocks are the only ones that can revive themselves. So right. If you're going right. I haven't got a that far yet. huge room full of really tough enemies. Then uh, you know, and everybody get, goes down. The Sunbro can revive himself. Um, and then the last is is my class, which is Hunter. You get a golden gun, which is a one shot kill for most things. Not all PVE things go down one kill, but all players do in PvP. Um, and then your alternate one is actually a way overpowered. Uh, sword slashing attack that you can do for a pretty decent amount of time, which auto homes in onto the nearest target, so you can really screw with people and enemies. It's pretty nice. So, real briefly, because I don't want this to be 95 minutes long, the leveling progression system is okay. Uh, you don't unlock a ton of different things, so I don't. I never really felt like. The guns and things that you get go very slowly, and mm -hmm. it takes a long time to upgrade them. So unlike Borderlands, where you're being handed a new piece of gear and just stack comparing and then swapping out because that's okay, you've invested a lot of time in this particular weapon and XP and etc. Uh, it, it can be a real hassle to, ch to swap out for something else, especially when you get up into legendaries and... Uh, uh, exotic armor and weapons. It's it's a big deal. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't gotten into anywhere near the level of I'm going to call it crafting because it's basically the only crafting thing the game has at the moment. Uh, the weapon crafting. I haven't gotten you know, obviously I haven't gotten a rare and exotic, and I know it gets kind of crazy after you get to that point. But even just with the rares, uncommons, and commons, you know, I'll have a rare weapon that I've got, and I'll have gotten commons even that have higher attack power but i can't swap them out because i've got this ability that wada 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 and i dumped you know glimmer and all this other stuff into it to get that thing and it's like well i don't want to give that up and go with a you know white right. weapon even though it's got higher attack so, yeah, so it's, that's it's it's, it's, a, it's, it's odd and, and i i don't want to spend too much more time on gameplay but there are two main aspects i want to touch on loot drops are completely broken you don't get them nearly as often as you should. And nine times out of ten, when you get uh, what they call an engram, which means it's going to be an unknown item uh, of a, of unknown level, legendaries are the highest drops. That, well, other than... Uh, there, there's one higher, but let's just stay with legendaries for a minute, which are purples. You can take that to the guy to cash it in, and you can frequently end up with a blue or a green instead of a purple. Now, there is a patch supposedly coming next week to fix that. I'm sorry, I'm reviewing the game as of right now because you've got to put a cap on it somewhere. And as of right now, the loot system is completely borked. There was a loot cave that Bungie shut down because people were standing out there all day shooting into it because they figured out that with more people, they could get higher loot rate, rate drops. Bungie said, oh, we don't want people to do that. We're going to fix the, the system so that you're going to go do more, more missions. Fuck you, Bungie. If I want to stand in front of a cave <laughs> and bypass your stupid loot drop system, don't tell me how to play my game. And, you know, there are people doing it because your game's busted. But I digress. Uh, the, the other thing... Uh, how, how do you really feel on this? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really upset about it, in all honesty, because this Breathe. game could have been so much more. They promised us so much more. They didn't give it. This is the only angry review I think I've ever done, which is why I've got Matt here to kind of ease me off from the ledge a little bit. Because okay, okay. So, so do we bring up the ten point ten year plan point here, or do we wait till we get through the rest of it? No, fuck the ten year plan because there is no ten year plan, and it doesn't matter about a ten year plan. This game. Well, let's let, let, let's rating on what it is right now and whether or not you should spend. Your right, time. I'm not saying it should affect the rating or the score, but. If they deliver on the 10-year plan, then that's a different story. But we have no way of knowing right now. Right, what right, we, we don't. What we do have but. is pre-order for two very expensive pieces of DLC, which brings me to the second thing I wanted to address before we move on from gameplay. And that is, this is a hell of a small game. Oh, yes. You have basically 
four to five areas across four maps. That's a total of 20 maps total. And you just keep going back. Over and over and and over. Hey, you know what happens if you're low on money, which is glimmer in the game? You go back to one of these maps that you've been to a thousand times and you're running around in a circle gathering chests so that you can make money and parts and break those down for more money and stuff. It's grinding. And it's not fun grinding. It's just grinding for grinding sake, which is goes back to what I was saying about there being an artificial level cap. This game progression and pacing is horrible. It is not something I was expecting from Bungie. Um, it, it, I can run almost every map and every strike in my sleep with my eyes closed. Okay, so now, now, now let me let me let me come at you with another point. Now I can't. Um, we actually last night I was playing with Shoal. I hate how I didn't pronounce that. Um, and we hit the PlayStation exclusive map, the PS4 exclusive uh, strike, which I don't remember. It was on Mars. That's all I remember. I don't remember what it was. Okay, yeah. the, the 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 three scions. The, oh, the, that fucking thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Wait, I, I have. To, I, <laughs> Thank you. You brought up another point that I wanted to address. This, there's been a lot of talk about how hard these missions are. That is 100% true. And do you know why they're so hard? Because they have no other content to give you. Yeah, it, it kind of feels like old school, right? It kind of feels like, you know, games in the you know, late 80s, early 90s were hard. And it wasn't because... That basically they were cheap. I mean, how many times playing Ninja Gaiden on your NES did you go to jump over a pit and have a damn bat <laughs> come and knock you down the dang hole and kill you, you know, in one minute? It's been 20 years, you're still on about that bat. I, I am still on about those damn bats. I will I will never let go of those damn bats. It still ticks me off. Um, but yeah, so, I, but, I mean, but, but it's kind of the similar, right? I mean, they crank the difficulty of these big bosses up so hard. I, they're just bullet sponges. That's all it is. Yeah, it's just strictly bullet sponge. I, I think the entire game is just cranked up the difficulty just so that it takes you longer, Too to, longer to get through stuff through these artificial level gates. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no new content, or there's no further content to see. That that has probably been the biggest. Um, let's see, is this gameplay? Uh, I guess it kind of is, but you know, I I don't play. I don't get to play as much, right? I right. general rule. I, I I didn't take a week off. I didn't get to do right, that. Right, I, right. You know, I, it took me longer to get to twenty. So in a way, I feel like maybe they were thinking, or I don't know that they were thinking at all. That aside. There is a part of me that appreciates the fact that it's not so big, at least not up front, because like I jumped into WoW on like the third expansion, I think, and it was just I mean, mentally overwhelming trying to figure out how to, to chug through this thing, starting off as a night elf from the first part of the first game and chug. Counter, counter question for you. Okay. Did you play Borderlands 1? No, I, I have not played either Borderlands. Okay. Well, Borderlands 1 is not overwhelming, and it's like four times the size of this game. Right. No, I'm, I'm not saying that they, they... I think they missed the mark on a lot of things here. I think so, too. Um, I'm not as mad as you about it, but again, I'm playing like five games at the same time. So I'm not, you know, I'm not rocking into Destiny strictly alone by itself. So, you know, uh, and... And a gameplay thing, I, uh, you you started off on this uh, before we before we talked, and I don't know if this is where you want to hit it or not, but um, you you've been level ahead of me for basically the entire game, and so we've gone back and we've done my stuff together, and we've gone through you know the raids and the strikes and the whatever, or not the raids, the strikes and different stuff, and historically that still has gotten you at least drops to break down and use to be able to upgrade the stuff that you've got now. You were talking about, was it the Queen's Raid? Yeah, or so, so just real quick for a background. They, they just released something called the Queen, Queen's Wrath, which is a series of bounties. And bounties are things that you can do every day to get you points. And the best way to upgrade your gear. <laughs> yeah, and the best way to upgrade your gear, which is more grinding, just FYI. And when you do this, uh, you for the Queen's Bounty, you get legendary items. Well, I already have a full set of legendary gear, 
it's already all mostly maxed out. I don't need any more. So what we were doing is when Matt would jump on and says, hey, I need help running these, I could run it with him if I'd finished one of these bounties myself. And then I would get a legendary that I could break down for components that I can use to upgrade my legendary gear. So even though I'm helping a friend, which is the whole point of the game, it's a social experience, you, gotta, you wanna play with your friends, I would get something out of it. Well, they actually made it two days ago so that you can no longer break down that equipment. So now I have no impetus to help Matt whatsoever. And it's not like I'm not gonna help him because you know he's my friend, but you get the idea here. The game is actually, Bungie has actually taken away the social aspect of their social shooter MMO that is online all the time for, so that you can play with other people. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. Yeah, I, I gotta agree with that one. I, I, I can't, I can't come up with a good reason for that. I mean, I, I get that they're trying to limit the grinding. It's an artificial. It's, level. it's an artificial. It's an artificial construct. I mean, it is an MMO. You're supposed to be able to do whatever you want to do, right? It's kind of a sandbox MMO. All right, we're gonna finish uh, this up. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna finish this up in four minutes. We've got one last section to hit, and that's presentation. Gorgeous. Fantastic. <laughs> Gorgeous. You know, the yeah, music, they nailed it. The yeah. music is great. Um, the you know we've got the 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 British space actors uh, that should be sounding like this behind a mask, but somehow you understand them perfectly. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, I mean, I, I think the presentation layer on all aspects is fantastic. And pro tip, if you didn't know, you can actually hear chests. There is a noise. Tinging sound. Yeah. No, there, it's actually... No, it's, it's not it's, tinging. It's, it's like a... Yeah. Once right. you hear it, then you, and you start finding the chests that correlate with it, you can't ever unhear it. And that's a, a, a really crafty trick by the audio designers. Um, but, you know, everything from top to bottom is fine. Peter Dinklage's voice performance is okay. Okay. It's not nearly as bad as it was in the alpha before they put the robot mask over it. And they edited it down. <laughs> edited it down to remove things like... That wizard came from the moon. Um, which I still say every time I go to that spot in the game. Uh, but, you know, overall, the I will say what is a little odd is the fact that you have a cursor, as in like a mouse cursor, that you use in a direct input controller. Uh, it That seems weird. And the other thing that seems weird is artificial loading times. Um, when you are on the surface of a planet and you want to go to another planet, you must first go back up to your ship, which is a loading screen. You go into orbit where your ship is, then you pick where you want to go, and then there's another loading screen. And I, I really like uh, how they've done the, the environments. I love how they look. I love the draw distance. It's it's you see for forever. The only problem I have with it is the draw distance almost even looks artificial. And I think this ties into your point where you feel like you should you see that rocket over there at the beginning and you feel like you should be able to go over there and explore where that rocket is. It looks like a matte painting used in a movie, you know, to give you the illusion that something's huger than it is. Huger? Larger than it is. So I don't know that they ever, I, I, it feels like you're in this one little island that's surrounded by, it, it's uh, what the Truman Show, you know, you're on this one little island that's surrounded by fake. Uh, it looks gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. I think it looks gorgeous, but it looks like it's not really there. It's not in engine. It, it looks like an image. So um, let's wrap so, this yeah. up. The verdict. For those dun, of you dun, jumping dun. ahead from the beginning, because I put the button there that said you could jump in for the too long, didn't read, didn't want to watch all the conversation between and here's what I'm going to say. And then Matt, I'll corroborate with Matt. He's going to score it. I'm going to score it. Uh, the promises were not delivered on. It has got fun shooting mechanics. It is incredibly limited in scope of gameplay. Uh, lots of grinding. For the average person, should you buy this game, if you really love first-person shooters and you want to spend a medium amount of time with the game, yes. If you want to spend more than 40 hours with the game, I would say no. I'm going to give the game a 6.5 out of 10. It is not a bad game. It's just not... There's not enough content in the game to last very long. And the issues I have with the game... 
don't change the fundamentals that it is a fun game to play, especially with friends, but at the same time, it is not worth, in my opinion, 60 bucks. Matt? Um, yeah, I mean, if you are if you want to play it with the plan that you're going to turn around and exchange it at your favorite game exchange location, uh, yeah, that there's nothing wrong with buying this thing. You can burn through the story, such as it is. You can play some PvP. Uh, which, you know, is the same as, you know, it's, it's just like any other shooter game that's got their, their death match and their conquest and the, the, that's really what the PVP is in this game. It's, it's shooter PVP. It's not MMO PVP. Um, I think it's gorgeous. I think they did a really good job of building a visual world that makes sense. Um, aside from the fact that the moon has gravity or lots of gravity, like earth, like level of gravity, quite quite good variable (laughs) gravity. 15 years ago, and yet we can't have variable gravity. Well, it, it, it was terraformed. It, well, not really. It wasn't really terraformed. Anyway, whatever. Um, I, 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 I can't. I, gravity. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't. Atmosphere, but you sure can't change the gravity. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even go with that one on my own. But, um, you know, the, the, the difference between the worlds, between the planets, so I think they did a good job of establishing a visual style for each planet. Um, you just don't get to see enough of it. Uh yeah, even my 14-year-old son was like, why do I start every mission at the exact same place? So, you know, if you're not even holding your 14-year-old audience, you got problems. Um, if you were going to give it a score, what would you give it? Hey, I'm stalling, sorry. Uh, I would probably go with about a 7. I think the only thing that bumps it up from what you are you have, and I, I don't do a lot of shooter multiplayer, and that multiplayer is the most fun i've had since our old days in um in resistance so uh i think that's what bumps it up a half notch for me but again i haven't done it that much you know we haven't you know spent like an entire night doing it so um it's still newish funish what do you think let us know in the comments below uh if you like this uh video review format let us know as well like subscribe give us your feedback how do you like destiny For everything else, Destiny, keep it locked to GamersLedge.com.